Chloe Catchpole has written a new book to help others and she joins me this morning. Good morning, Chloe. Good morning. Um, it's really, really interesting read because you, you begin the book by talking about your, your childhood years. You had a very happy, loving family. Everything was normal, yes. if there is such a word. Yeah. Um, and at what stage then did you start to feel uncomfortable in your own skin where you just weren't happy um it was i mean reflecting on it it's probably about 15 so i was in my last years of secondary school um but i just sort of put it down to normal teenage problems all my friends had issues with um, how they looked so that's how i'd say it was started but i actually didn't get a diagnosis until i was about 20 so mm -hmm. five years later but at that stage what what was it what were the little trigger signs for you at 15 what was it that you looked in the mirror and you just you didn't see the real image of yourself? Um, the, I mean, gradually it started off, I, your reality becomes warped over time. So it would just be little things. So my main issue was my hair. All my friends had thick, really luscious hair. And I was so jealous. I thought, how can I make my hair bigger? So I tried back combing, but it would take forever to undo, obviously. So, and then it became things like photos. I'd compare, be like, how can I dress like them, wear makeup like them, be the same weight as them. And then it's gradually sort of spirals into different other things that combine into one big ball of just anxiousness, really. Yeah, I mean, at one stage in those years, you, you became absolutely convinced you had a, a lump on your neck. Yes. Um, and so you wouldn't leave the house at all unless you were completely wrapped up in big scarf. Yep. And this was all going on within your own mind. Absolutely. And even in boiling weather, I would, if I had to go out, I would take a scarf and feel really uncomfortable. But that was absolutely the only way I could leave the house because I was so afraid of people seeing me. And I, I mean, I say it in, in the book I've written as well, but I felt like the hunchback of Notre Dame, really. I was so ashamed of how my neck looked. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the, the strange thing again in the book, I mean, you've got an identical twin sister, yes, I Olivia. Do. Your reality is definitely warped because people would tell me that I look fine. I was looking for reassurance, but I would not believe them. This image I had in my mind was reality and that's what everyone else saw and nobody could tell me otherwise, really. At, at your lowest moment, um, how did it affect your, your life? Um, I didn't really leave the house for a couple of years. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go out till I wouldn't see friends. I lost a lot of my friends um, and I self-harmed. I felt really suicidal. I felt like a freak. I never, I just thought, why me? I felt so alone. I think that's a lot of thing with mental illness. You feel so alone. But I just felt like the black sheep of the family and embarrassment and that I didn't want my family to put up with that embarrassment really. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just avoided all sort of um, emotional and physical contact, really. And that even affected school life. Obviously, your A-levels became an issue then yes. as well. You couldn't, you just didn't want to do them. No, I dropped out um, twice of college, different colleges. And my family was so supportive and did everything for me. But in my heart of hearts, I think I was just trying to do it for them. But I just could, I couldn't at that point. I was so ill. Mm -hmm. Even getting the train by myself was an absolute struggle. Yeah, I just couldn't do anything. At what point then, after the diagnosis, um, which was a, a, a relief to you in many ways, yeah. because suddenly there, there was a title for how you felt. Absolutely. Um, how did you start to turn that around then? Um, I think my main thing is one through one of my therapies, I had quite a few attempts at therapy. One of them wasn't great, which can be really off-putting for people, but I would urge people if they've had a bad experience to go on and try therapy again. Um, one of my therapists suggested I might have BDD. I'd never heard of it read all the condition thought that's me like it was uh, like a slap in the face i thought this is me and then i got to see dr david veal at the priory in north london which i was very lucky to as he's the specialist on it and sort of the turning point was from there because he gave me um contacts with specialized uh, cbt which is as my condition was so ingrained which is really what i needed the specialist techniques to help me get better yeah which is what you have now put into the book yes. actually and it is a complete breakdown of how you've got through this this Absolutely. struggle and, and actually the there's telltale signs in there you've got your mum speaking in there they're yes. the two doctors there are various things to help people spot the signs Absolutely. at home Absolutely. yes i mean i think the main thing um, is BDD is a perceived flaw, but it can be different for many people. At one point for me, it was my whole body. It doesn't just have to be one thing. And for example, for me, I would avoid photos, but other people will make take 
200, 300 selfies a day. And it's not vanity, it's the total opposite. For me and for many other sufferers, we just want to be normal, mm -hmm. just want to blend in with the crowd because we feel that we stick out like a sore thumb and we're, we're so embarrassed to be like that. Yeah, but you're doing well now, Chloe. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm currently freelancing in film journalism, which is my dream career, and it's really great because if I'm having a bad mental health day, I can put my techniques into practice. Um, and yeah, I'm just enjoying life a lot more. And I've still got a way to go, you know. Recovery isn't A to B, it's A to Z. And it's fine, that's what I want to get across as well. It's fine to have an off day. But as soon as you get those techniques in place, it really does help you. That's great, Chloe. Well, thank you very much for sharing that. You'll help so many people just by being honest about something that isn't Brilliant. spoken thank about yeah. that, that much. So it's great to hear you. Thank you very Absolutely. much, Chloe. Thank you very much.